What's going on, everyone? We're doing another interview. We got two interviews today. I don't know if I'm going to have Eric's interview up later today because this one's going to be about an hour and a half long. Um, I've got John Keen from the Best Damn Podcast, who I've done his show a couple times. Some of you have reached out to me and asked me to have him on. Some of you have asked us to collab. Uh, we're going to definitely do that today. Um, I'm bringing him in because what I like to do is you guys have seen me do this with Satan, Lucifer, Baphomet, Hell, for example, um, things of that nature. Uh, we like to demystify things because the public will tell you that things are evil, like Blavatsky and Crowley. So what I'm going to do is bring John on and we're going to jump right into Blavatsky. So how's it going, brother? Hey, bro. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see you. Um, I always enjoy, you know, having conversations with you, bro. Um, I feel like you bring a, your own unique perspective to things, especially when it comes to astro theology. I know uh, when we first met, that was, um, you know, that was right around the time when I was really starting to open up a lot to astrology. So, uh, you know, your work had a pretty good influence on me, you know, Thank as you. far as like, so yeah, man. Thank Glad you. To be so, here. I want to have you on because I want to, I want to jump right into Blavatsky. Now, people will tell you, first of all, guys, the word occult is a Latin word, and it own, and, and it it means hidden. That's all it means. We're talking hidden information. People think occult is evil. It's the devil. It's all this nonsense. It's not. And Blavatsky is one of the brightest minds. She started theosophy. Um, and I got John on, and uh, he brought some notes, and we're just gonna we're just gonna talk and hopefully get to understand um, theosophy a little bit more and then we'll move on. We'll take a, like a minute break or something and then we'll move on to Crowley and Palima and the Golden Dawn. So John, where do we even start with Blavatsky? Do you want to give a little brief of who she was? Um, yeah, well, uh, Madame Blavatsky, uh, first and foremost, um, you know, was a member, I believe, of the Theosophical Society. She was one of like a uh, the, the prominent leaders of her time and bringing theosophy to the forefront, which is like the mixing of occult sciences and philosophy. Uh, one of the things that she's most known for is um, her compilation of Eastern religions and Eastern schools of thought in particular, uh, putting it in one big giant book, this amalgamation of all of you know, the occult knowledge that a lot of people in Western culture wouldn't know, they, they just dismissed as, you know, especially because of the, you know, Christianity at that time. Um, people weren't very open-minded and, you know, she connected the, the religions around the world to the mysteries, uh, you know, that we would see here in Freemasonry uh, and things like that. And she put together a book called The Secret Doctrine, which basically is, you know, that, and I was, you know, I was saying this to you, that outside of um, Manly P. Hall's The Secret Teaching of, of All Ages, I think The Secret Doctrine probably falls in there as like, you know, like um, an occult Bible. It's that great of a work, especially when it comes to, you know, mystical, uh, hidden, occult knowledge, hermetic knowledge, which you're right. When we look at the word occult, it means to be hidden. It's hidden from plain sight. Mm -hmm. She talks a lot about in the secret doctrine, the two perspectives, because we live in a dualistic world. So this is a duality in essence, the, what we call the matrix, which matrix in Hebrew means womb. Right. And then that gets into, which we'll get into um, Crowley and all that later talking about, uh, you know, the amelantra working and uh, the egg of consciousness and how that correlates to wounds. But anytime we look at, you know, uh, things like the secret doctrine, it kind of breaks down to, and I pulled, I don't know if you need to share. Yeah. Can I, can I screen share? Yes. Yeah. You could share. I'll put it, I'll put it up. Okay. All right. Let's see. Share screen. Boom. This is something I pulled uh, earlier here. There we go. We we're having feedback. Having feedback, you said? We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Um, this is actually from the Secret Doctrine, 
And this is called the coming force. And what she's talking about here is essentially the age that I feel like we're, we're crossing into now. Uh, Micah, you're very familiar with astrology and probably so the procession of the equinox mm -hmm. and how it's the shifting of ages, how we are shifting or have shifted into this Aquarian age. And that mm -hmm. each age in zodiacal sign um, is representative of an energetic archetype or, you know, elements and, and things like that. So as we passed the Piscean age, which was two fish, right? Duality, mm -hmm. uh, about the water, you know, the living waters and, you know, the earth being made up of water, the heavens and the waters, you know, it was prominent. We mastered steam power and all kinds of things during that age. Now we move into the age of, you know, things being done in the air on the collective. This is, you know, about, you know, technology, societal structure being reshaped in the Aquarian age. So we see uh, social structures that'll be more about the collective instead of, you know, like those on the very top of the pyramid, it's going to be about, you know, the base. Um, mm -hmm. We're also going to see a lot more pertaining to collective consciousness. Um, that's why you see this, this jump or this leap towards transhumanism as well, because it's very technological. This is why, uh, you know, the father of Freemasonry, Albert Pike's 1871 letter to Mazzini talked about the three world wars and the final one being a social cataclysm, because that's what it takes almost right. like this, this death or this collapse um, at the end of these cycles to, to rebirth something new and that's the new age that's a new world order that's the utopian society that those who are illuminated allegedly are are trying to attain when really what it actually means those who are illuminated are those who are able to actually communicate in higher levels of consciousness and madame blavatsky was one of those people right so a lot of what she's putting in these books she's channeling from um a dimension or a frequency space that's that that we would call like christed right anointed consciousness where you can get there's less traffic up there and you perceive things different especially information it's almost like you have a bird's eye view of it so this is called the coming force and this is talking about you know energy and how things have become quantum and all this i won't read lo a lot just a, a very little it says shall we say that force is moving matter or matter in motion and a manifestation of energy or the matter and force are the phenomenal differentiated aspects of the one primary undifferentiated cosmic substance. So she's saying like, these are just different polarities of one energy, one unified whole consciousness or power that we call, and, and she's going to break it down. Like when we see the name of God as L electric or arc angels, arc mm -hmm. angles, electrical arcs, right? Mm -hmm. And the angles of the abstract system, or, um, you know, this is a system where in essence, you look at the, uh, the earth is like a collective third eye, the magnetic field, like it's a collective third eye for all of us looking at the earth. It looks like a giant eyeball. It's our collective third eye. And the seven main powers, which are the seven seven planets uh seven main planets are the governors or archons or rulers of the reality right the bible calls them the elohim absolutely the elohim yeah and we call them angels i mean mm -hmm. planets deities like and that's what i mean when i actually started first hearing your stuff uh mike uh, i was in a very different place it's been years ago uh, yeah. now um but i remember like the astro theology concept to me uh I didn't think, I mean, I think there's multi layers to everything, but it's like, damn, like this is, this makes sense. There's a significant reason of why biblical stories and why, um, and why religious stories and texts always seem to kind of like, you know, rotate around or revolve around, you know, the stories of the stars and the movement of the stars, especially when it comes to the sun, you know, or the planets, the seven main planets. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I, I do want to go right here and just read, finish this here. It says, the query is made with regard that the stanza treats of Fohat and his seven brothers or sons. The seven brothers or sons, either seven sons of Satan, 
um, seven days of the week, seven colors of the rainbow. In other words, the cause and the effect of cosmic electricity. So like I said, L, electric, the latter called in a cult, the parlance or the seven primary forces of electricity whose purely phenomenal and hence grossest effects are alone cognizable by physicists on the cosmic and especially on the terrestrial plane. You know, it's interesting too, because around the same time that she was around, uh -huh. uh, Walter Russell was penning his work, talking about how everything is electromagnetic. Um, wow. And uh, the other thing too, that I wanted to, <clears throat> we are transitioning out of Pisces right now. I tell you guys, we have 12 signs, and each sign can be broken down into three 10 day cycles uh, called deacons. And what I tell you guys is we have things called cusps or handover dates. It's a three day period on either side of the sign, right? Where a sign hands over the energy to another and things get blended a little bit. Now, yeah. some astrologers will be fixed sign and they won't they'll tell you that there's no such thing. There's an argument to be made about that, but overall things tend to overlap. And when you're talking about a three-day period on either side where a, where a sign blends in. We're in the blending into Aquarius right now, which is why mm -hmm. we have all this Piscean shit going on. Yeah. It's dying off. And they're trying to speed this up into the age of Aquarius. See, the age of Pisces is the age of belief. It's the age of religion. Whereas the age of Aquarius is the age of knowing. And they tell you this in the Bible, that in the end, we win. God wins. The elites know that their time is up. That's why everything is speeding up right now. That's why they're doing this. They're trying to hold on to their power as long as they can because it is what it is. You know, when we get into, when, we, when we're fully in Aquarius, it's going to be a consciousness shift. People are going to wake up. People are already starting to wake up. I, yeah, I think we're already shifting, Michael. Mm. Okay. No, continue. I, no, continue. I was listening. I, I mean, but I just think we're already shifting. I think we're already. We definitely, I don't know if we're fully in Aquarius. But I do know that we are we are at the very least within the cusp period of time. So you guys understand, you guys understand in a 30 day cycle for one sign and then a 30 day cycle for the next sign, the last three and the first three, that's the cusp, that's the blending. When you mm -hmm. do the procession of the equinoxes, it's a procession, so there's a slippage, it goes backwards. So what you're gonna realize is instead of the first sign being Aries and then Taurus and then Gemini and then Cancer, you're actually going backwards. When so from Pisces? Yeah, so we were just in Pisces, now we're going to Aquarius. Whereas if we were just doing the uh, regular year, it would go from Pisces when it's done to Aries, which it doesn't. We're coming into Aquarius right now. So if we're in the slippage period right now, if we're in the three days on either side period right now, yeah. um, it's going to be a lot more elongated because each side is 2,160 years. So there yeah. is, you just have to do the conversion. It's simple math, guys. Um, so we are definitely... This is a great time to be alive. Um, <laughs> we're definitely seeing a change. We're the agents of change. And yeah. you're absolutely right about transhumanism and everything. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and I, I would have to agree with you. I feel like um, energetically uh, or intuitively, you can still feel the residue of Pisces mm -hmm. still. I mean, it's still here too. Yeah, right. people agree. are fighting, I, for, fighting for their religion still. And yes, it's going to die, guys. It's, it, it is going to die in the new age. And it's yeah. going to give way to something that is way better. You have I to think understand it's going to be more about people believing in themselves. Yes. Honestly. Yes. We're going to understand the Bible. We're going to understand. It's, it's magic is what it is. The <laughs> things that you can yeah. do. The things that you can do if you understand your true self. Yeah. You know, the ancient saying, probably the most famous ancient saying is know thyself. You know, get to know yourself, understand yourself, know what you're able to do. Everything that I talk to, I know that I have Christians that follow my channel in their brain. I don't know if they just get angry when they watch it because sometimes they come back. <laughs> but um, <laughs> their mind immediately shuts off when you start talking Blavatsky, Crowley, or any of that kind of stuff. Oh, it's from Satan. It's the devil. Well, is Absolutely. everything from the devil? You, you guys have to understand that the amazing thing is, is that all these ancient works, yes, libraries have burned down. Yes, we've lost a lot of them but we have so much. And the reason they don't want you to read in churches and in mosques and in temple, they want you to read outside of it, is because we can still read a ton of stuff, put it together and come up with new things, which is what Blavatsky basically did. It's an amalgamation of everything, like you said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think with things like um, 
the secret doctrine you see here i pulled up another one these are based on the same prim principles uh, another popular female in the occult alice bailey um, a lot of people especially in uh, conspiracy circles are familiar with um and you see by lucis trust it's all luciferian a lot of this is um uh well you see that uh alice bailey wrote the 10 point plan of the new world order right and it's when you and, and this is one of the things i think that's really insane about this you have great minds like carl young uh who's heavily associated with the the cult and the collective unconscious and collective conscious and the anima and the animus because yeah. psychology is such a big part of the esoteric and the occult study it really is dissecting one's thoughts emotions understanding how every part of yourself your organs to the the stars above to the elements in the earth to all of the you know principalities powers and dominions and how they all correlate with your your essence and how you're a part of all of that and how you literally as it. above so below we are all one that's what all the ancients tell you yeah yeah, and, and there's a connectedness to it, and it breaks it down into a scientific way of understanding it. That way it makes sense. It demystifies uh, spirituality and in essence, but it also really shows you like the omnipotent power of creator, that it's really so far beyond what any of us can even imagine. If you think about it, we see 0.00001% of the electromagnetic light spectrum. Same with the audio. What's that? Same with the audio. With audio too? Yeah. I think it's um, one, negative 120 hertz to 120 hertz. Well, I, I absolutely believe that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I didn't know it was that that big of a spam, but yeah. And then 97% uh, of the universe in science is is not, it's, it's unknown. We can't find it. So <laughs> that saying right there, both exoteric and esoteric understandings, like we have facts that say, we see just a sliver of our actual reality. And that's what uh, the occult is trying to do is pull power, pull the essence of yourself and connect to yourself that you don't see the mm -hmm. spiritual essence of yourself and make creations out of that, because that's where all things originate from. That's kind of like the primordial energy of everything. And like, if you look at, um, and, and when we get into like the Lima and stuff like that, there's a lot of, um, references to, to Knox and anti-primal triads and all of this. And it talks in a lot of negative terms and people will take it as something dark or evil. But what he's talking about is like the blackness of before anything existing. That's probably what God is actually like. You know, it's so funny for people like us and just people who watch this channel, unless you're religious, is that you can fully tell them that religion is a manipulation mind control. And then in the same breath, tell them that there is a creator and you believe in them. And they can't, they can't, they can't fathom that. They don't understand how one can be without the other. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, and that's because that's been like the, the paradoxical reality that they've been given. And they've just accepted as as really they can form along with this. It's like, what do you mean you don't have a religion and you don't have a, have a God? If we can't put it into a box or yep. uh, define it or, um, you know, project it onto some logo or image, then, you know, and that's the one thing about, I feel like people, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like a lot of people that are hip to, you know, you know, or at least in tune with spirit, know that God don't go in a box at all. There's no name to encompass it. There's no form to encompass it. It's, you know, it's beyond masculine, feminine. It's, it's everything. You know, when you get it's into all of us, when you get into deep Judaism, mysticism, yeah, I'm talking like beyond the Kabbalah. When you okay. get into deep stuff, they talk about the name of God and they call him Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But if you understand that in Hebrew, if you say the letters individually, they come out as a breath. They don't come out as a, a word. So it's yeah. So they say that with every breath that you live in, you're saying the name of God, and that's how he embeds himself. Well, and isn't that interesting? Uh, that you know, the breath of life that was breathed into our nostrils by the Creator, by the way, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, looking at the breath too, that's you know the air. 
you know, and that's the, the age we're going into is the age of the air. And then you think about the devil is referred to as a prince of the power of the air mm -hmm. in the Bible as well. So, I mean, a lot of people believe that the devil is the creator of our, our world, um, uh, if you will. And, and I feel like that's just kind of a lack of understanding of, of energy of, you know, negativity that it is a darkness or the reflection that is our world. You know, this is a reflection of, you know, the, the spiritual consciousness, you know, energy that is above is being projected down here. And I feel like it, it actually projects from uh, the stars through the prism or lens that is our um, electromagnetic field. And those lights um, come down here and they vibrate light and sound. And that's what creates you know us that's what projects us but it's our consciousness projecting so we in essence would be the angels you know if the angels you know looking down you think about the story of yada bayoff and uh, the gnostic text uh uh ruler of the the reality um the hypothesis of the archons it talks about how um sophia the holy spirit looked down and that's what caused her to fall to the lion-headed serpent which is a seraphim it's like the stars focus downward. And if you look up from earth, you know, the stars are looking down on us. It's trying to tell you like how the light and sound. Um, and that's why it's a, a demiurge, right. Mm -hmm. of, of everything that's trapping us. It's a distortion, you know, uh, it's a vibratory state that we call sound that holds right. all of our physical reality together and everything emanates from light. You know, so light is like the spirit and then sound is, is mm -hmm. the matter. It is the lower, mm -hmm. you know. You know, it's interesting, too, because Genesis 1, 3 says, and God, um, and then there was, and God created light. Yeah. Right? Genesis yeah. 1, 3 says, and God created light. Well, guess what? Inside a woman's body, when the sperm meets the egg and it gets let in by the egg, because a lot of people don't know this, but they think that the first sperm that gets there goes in. That's not the case. They also think that, you know, well, that's what they basically think. What you don't realize is the egg chooses which sperm to let in. And when it does that and the sperm goes in, inside the woman's body is a measurable flash of light that goes off. That's the beginning of creation. It's the macro and the wow. micro. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I do know too, that at the back of the optical nerve, which you think about our eyes, you know, we're perceiving the light and everything we see. And it talks about too, um, in uh, Gnostic text that everything was made a, as a, uh, reflection of the waters above, right? Mm -hmm. Same book, reality of the rulers. Everything was made as a reflection of the waters above. So heaven being water, you know, earth being water, we're made up of 80% water, earth, 80% water, water has memory. It can be influenced by sound. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's Dr. Uh, Emoto's work, by the way, if you want to see sacred geometry patterns, depending absolutely. on whether you say positive or negative things to the water, water has memory. Yeah. Well, you can see it on TikTok too, Micah, and, um, like those rice experiments and shit mm -hmm. people yeah. uh, and, and it's sitting in water. So, I mean, ultimately that's what's doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, and, and, and when we look at, you know, all of these, you know, these kind of principles, um, you know, we, we look at the Bible, it talks about that we were made in the image of the Elohim An image. If you look at like the Hebrew meaning, it means a phantom, a projection, an illusion or an idol. So it's saying that that image that we're made in the Elohim being the stars or the sons of God. Um, and, uh, we are a projection or a phantom or an illusion. So it's saying like we are literally just a, a shadow. It's like when we're watching movies, you know, it's something like that from the heavens. Like we're having energy or light projected into our being, you know, and then it talks about worshiping um, idols, false idols. It means worshiping your physical self, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. worshiping the physical self and you, know, you can get into carl young and the archetypes and the ego and all that stuff but let's stick with blavatsky for now because mm -hmm. that's what i really want to get into yeah um well her theory on um and we'll go over here her theory on uh the coming force uh, basically, uh, and let me just pick up where i was at um includes sound light color right? 
-hmm. physical science tells us that these forces sound, it says, is a sensation produced by the impact of atmospheric molecules. So it's a vibration um, by which setting up delicate tremors in the auditory apparatus. So essentially we interpret electrical signals or vibrations as sounds. That's what makes us think we hear things with our senses. Uh, we're picking up things like a, a receiver. And that's why our third eye um, is essentially, it's the magnetic pole of our body. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why there's been so, so many agendas. Like, you, you know, Micah, there's a lot of agendas going on right now. It's like destroy. Uh, the temple of God or the third it. temple, huh? To calcify it. Yes. And, and I mean, I'm, uh, there's other methods too, using graphene and things like that because mm -hmm. that's a uh, magnetic material and it's drawn to, and that's why people have so many, you know, brain and heart problems, uh, nerve system, nervous system problems because your nervous system is like the electrical, uh, wiring of your body. Uh, and then your heart, you know, that's the biggest magnet in your body. And then the North Pole, the magnetic pole of your body is your third eye. So that's right. why people have, you know, from the graph. But, I, you know, we won't even talk about that. But um, so what it's saying, though, is that setting up delicate tremors in the auditory thus communicate themselves to the brain. Light is a sensation caused by the in impact of inconceivably minute vibrations on either on the retina of the eye. So uh, what's really cool about at the back of our eyes, how we flip images, we see everything upside down, yes. it's reflections of the heavens above. And and if you guys want to know what we're talking about, just go to Google. Sorry, John. Just go to okay. Google real quick and type in um, image transposition. And it's basically what happens. Your eye processes things upside down and then it has to be changed. So go on. Sorry. Yeah, it hits on the back of our eye. We flip it the right way up. But what's so we see it, you know, the way it is. It's in essence like Stranger Things. We live in the upside down. It's a reflection. It's the mm -hmm. underworld as above, so below. We're living there already. Um, so, uh, in essence, what it, you know, uh, at the back where your optical nerve is, it, it actually isn't directly connected to your brain. So, there's a space in between there where creations taking place or sparking to actually make up the image and it's not directly connected to your brain. Wow. So that is, means it, your, is, it, is it like an, uh, uh, an electricity thing that just jumps? I, I don't know what actually takes place right there, but there's a, it's scientifically known. There's a space in between your brain and an optical nerve where it's like, there's nothing there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no actual connection. So it's like, there's a space between where you're, you're bursting something into life at your eyeballs. So your eyes ain't really seeing shit, but signals and you're actually making. Right. Just you so know, you guys know, your pineal gland is wired to your visual cortex too, by the way. It makes total sense, Mike. That makes total sense. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But yeah, so I mean, like in, scientifically too, we, we know that we're creating our own reality. And I feel like, you know, that's what the essence of the secret doctrine is, is to get you to understand al alchemically when we look at, you know, alchemy and there's lots of hermeticism and alchemy and all of that within this book as well. Um, and Blavatsky has taught about for, for years. That's ultimately what, um, you know, uh, her primary study was, was hermeticism and hermetics means like to be sealed. Right. Something hidden or sealed, just like a cult, really. Yes. But it's like the, you know, the ancient Egyptian and then the Greeks kind of brought it back. Well, why um, do you think the Vatican seals things in as paper <laughs> books in a vault? They right. seal it, put a spell on it, and then put it in the vault. Well, you know what's weird about that, Micah? Like, we're so connected consciously that when you seal something in the physical you can technically like seal it in the ethereal too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so everything part of our physical reality is connected to our spiritual reality and vice versa. So a lot of times that's why, you know, and it's called a, a circumambulation. Um, Blavatsky touches on it. Young touches on it. This process where through ritual, and that's why they're all big on ritual, especially um, you know, and things like uh, Golden Dawn, Rosicrucianism, uh, all of them are talking about spiritual alchemy too. Right. So it's tra transferring 
you know, the physical body into the spiritual body. Right. The, That's what a true know. alchemy is. It's, it's not literally turning lead into gold. It's your lower <laughs> self into your higher self. The yes. problem with all these esoteric and occult sciences, John, that I find uh -huh. is that they're sealed in ritual and they're sealed in metaphors and then people argue about it. Whereas what I try and do is say, this is what it actually is. Even when people write about it, they still mm -hmm. keep it sealed. You know, it's like, yeah. it has to get exposed. All this stuff has to come out. Um, I, I agree, but it's hard in a way. And I feel like the reason it's dripped out the way that it is, uh, especially like the mystical aspect of it is because for one, uh, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. So it's like giving a bunch of children fucking nuclear weapons. You know what I mean? It's That's like, the whole throwing pearls to swine that Jesus talks about. Right, right. That's why it's like, you know, you know somebody who's, you know, we're all on our, all on our own place and our own level. You know, we're not, we're all in a race against ourselves, right? Trying to better ourselves. But you also recognize other souls that have put a lot of time and energy and effort. And like, you know, it's like trial and error with the spiritual shit too. Like a lot of shit blows up in your face and stuff. And it's like lessons you learn to make you grow and get strong. You have to earn that knowledge. And a lot of people aren't willing to, to earn, right. um, uh, earn wi wisdom, you know, now you know, when, you know when Jesus keeps saying for those with eyes to see and ears to hear and people have yes. no idea what he's talking about yeah it, exactly exactly and elevating yourself when you're in um when you're in that space you know you're able to see things quite differently and i feel like uh you know that's um that that's that's that elite knowledge and that's a place where it's understood the best and until people can get to that place and i feel like we are like that's the shifting of aquarius i feel like you can see it now it's evident you look at social media it's more about self-care and fucking life coaching and you know metaphysical stuff I mean, everybody sees that the newspapers and the, the online press they're getting dumber with their headings and it's clickbaity. They they're getting dumber, but the populace is getting smarter and yes. they keep banning people because they don't want that reality to seek out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. I mean, I just had um, a discord ser discord server. I did my private shows and subscription shit on for years. Uh, I had over a thousand people on it. They just deleted that um, because people were posting medical misinformation on there. Um, and then I just got demonetized on my main YouTube channel about two weeks ago. Like, I mean, they just, they don't stop with, with that kind of stuff. It's, um, you know, I, I feel like though, eventually things have to balance out yeah. and, you know, and I feel like we're at that point where a lot more is about to be exposed. That's what I feel like in this Aquarian energy, that's what it's going to be. And a lot of people correlate the, uh, Pluto and Capricorn and all of that alignment um, to kind of be in like the official start uh, of, of the Aquarian age. So sometime basically like we're, t we're touching our toes into it now is what a lot of astrologists believe. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll see. Um, I do feel like we are. I do feel like um, like right now too, at this time of year with the sun and the sun being such positive energy, it's like bringing a lot of positivity to the collective right now. We're birthing new shit. We're birthing new shit. Um, I feel like we're now seeing, you know, the mechanisms of the machine and consciousness spreads. It's a ripple effect, Micah, you know, man. It's the like sun is the best antidepressant out there. Go outside, <laughs> wear your feet and touch grass. Literally people. The yeah. sun is the best. In fact, sunglasses are a psyop. Now, I wear them from time to time if it's really needed. But for the most part, it desensitizes you to the sun. Mm -hmm. It was done that way for a reason. And they try and make it trendy and fashionable and expensive. And, and, and so that people want them. I never wear try, sunglasses. Try and not wear sunglasses, people. Go outside, get 20 minutes of the sun every day. Try and do that. And if yeah. you can't do that, then light a candle and stare at it for 20 minutes. It's not as potent, but it'll help decalcify your third eye. It'll drop you into theta rhythms for your brain waves. There's just so many benefits to fire and light. But anyway, so what interests me so much about what you've shared so far about Blavatsky is when did she write this stuff? 
Um, let's see. Uh, I've got I got it up here. Uh, da, da, da. let's pull up the wiki. There it is, right there. She died in 1891. So wow. 1837. 1877. She published Isis Unveiled. Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. 1880. She. I'm trying to see when she wrote the Secret Doctrine. Published 1885. She returned. Yep. Uh, here mm -hmm. she published the Secret Doctrine. 140 years ago, guys. Listen to what she's saying 140 years ago. <laughs> 1885, and you know what, Micah? I swear to you, there's a real weird, weird fucking connection, and, and I'm pretty sure astrologically it bears out too, uh, to the late 1800s and, and about 1900s to about the, the 30s. You know, that time period, very, very similar shit was taking place. Like, um, you know, certain uh, astrological passings, like the Northern Torrid asteroids and just weird shit like that. The Spanish influenza, everybody wearing masks and the fucking pandemic and World War One and the red wave of fucking um, Russia. And, uh, you know, back then it was. Um, yeah. Now that you think now that I think about it, there are a lot of patterns. But you also had Blavatsky. The, the Bolshevik Revolution and it was Operation Trust instead of Trust the Plan of Trump. Like it was so many fucking weird. You also had Blavatsky, stories. Crowley. You also yes. had Einstein. You ever see that yeah. picture uh, that they took? And I forget what symposium they were, but it was like out of the 25 people there, 23 of them won Nobel Prizes. Niels oh. Bohr was there. Um, Heisenberg was there. You've got Tesla. You're right. There was at the end of the 1800s, there was an explosion. Yeah, it's a it's a conscious explosion. And think about the industrial revolution that followed. You know, it's like they brought us into the modern age with their thinking. You know, well, the problem I have with the industrial revolution is it put yeah. all this. It took away our go to see the Northern Lights. Go see Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how clear the sky is. You could see everything. Yeah. The Industrial Revolution ruined that. It put pollution in agree the with that. We can't yeah. see the sky. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. I mean, chemtrails, Starlink, fucking, yeah, there's a lot of stuff from that uh, for sure. They, uh, But that's because they're creating an artificial grid <laughs> within yeah. the earth. You know, like that's what it is. A worldwide web is to trap the web of consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, everything in technology mimics actual creation in a way that it works. So it's like that's why when you look at technology, it makes it so easy to understand the metaphysical side of things. Notice like language and computers, it's Python, right? Serpent. You know what I mean? It's like um, the Vatican, their main hall is a snake. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I mean, uh, and and that serpent to me, it, it's the forbidden knowledge, right? It's it was wisdom uh, before it became evil. The no. Bible really screwed two things up. It made snakes evil, and it made women the cause of the downfall of man. Honestly, yeah. the early Jews that wrote the Bible, if you take it literally, because you're not supposed to take the Bible literally, I go into great detail every day of my life, every breath explaining that you're not supposed to take it literally but if you do women took an apple from a snake and technically they never even said it was an apple in fact a lot of theologists will sit there and say it was a fig because you got to look pomegranate. At i've heard it's a pomegranate pomegranate yeah you can go back to uh oh, i can't remember her name that went into the underworld for six months Perse she persephone persephone persephone, that was persephone, persephone yes. six months okay so she had a pomegranate and she ate six seeds which she was sound by the way her name was phone her lap persephone persephone oh wow, wow. yeah okay yeah. <laughs> um yeah she ate six seeds so she had to spend six months in the underworld which is your winter um yeah. it's all the same story guys i'm trying to like break this down um but so john continue with blavatsky i know we keep going off track dude i could talk to you for 17 hours and like not it's incredible. I, I know. Well, it's like, well, here's the thing. When we look at like Blavatsky and I'm just going to keep it real. It's like what she represents. It's like the body of knowledge she represents. Mm -hmm. She's one of the great figureheads of the occult, esoteric, theosophy, hermeticism, like, you know, spiritualist of our time. Right. And her books were incredibly influential. Um, it wasn't just to um, Isis Unveiled is another incredibly influential book. And it was super fucking radical 
at the time when it came out. When that's one of the things that makes it really crazy about uh, her. And notice they were like Bolsheviks too, like the Bolshevik Revolution. See, mm -hmm. Yelena Petrov Petrovna. Um, a lot of these were like Russian um, Jewish people. Yeah, uh, the Bolshevik Revolution was Jewish. Yeah. Yeah, they were like um, Polish. A lot of them were Polish. And correct. Jewish. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I mean, which I mean. I, I don't care what race they are. I'm just pointing right. that out, you know. So this was part of a school of thought, you know. Yes. And a lot. That's why it's so heavily connected to uh, Marxism and communism and shit too. Mm -hmm. um, it's the redistribution of wealth and like giving it to the worker and all of that, um, and creating a, you know, a one one world system or one world body. Uh, which, you know, naturally only make, and, and a lot of these ideas derive out of theosophical societies. And there's a million other societies too, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we haven't, you know, even mentioned, um, that, uh, you know, uh, that were very prominent in shaping history. So it's like mm -hmm. knowing that someone like this too had enough, had enough foresight to like, to be able to be humble enough and do this without <laughs> internet research too. <laughs> I'm always blown <laughs> away by people like her, Manly P. Hall, Jordan yeah. Maxwell. Jesus Christ, these guys would go to a library or they would just you can't even Amazon books to your house to get them that quickly. Like, <laughs> can you can you imagine how hard it is to compile it? This is there's no excuse, people, why you can't attain this level of wisdom. There's none. The only thing that the elites can do is is to flood it with disinformation. But if you know where to look and you use discernment, you'll be fine. I'm also noticing here to May 8th, the day she died. That's known as White Lotus Day, the Theosophists. Mm. Um, that's the day that she died. I actually referenced that in one of my books, but I, I can't remember which one and what it was for. But um, so what are some tenements of theosophy? Um, well, uh... I feel like uh, theosophy is uh, essentially and built around um, objectively looking at, uh, at at the world from uh, a mystical point of view, right? It's where uh, the world of religion and philosophy collide. It's in essence, like when we look at that, it's you know, the, the sacred sciences, being able to take the spiritual or metaphysical world apart and look at all the moving pieces and understand, you know, how it how it works and how we can work it in our life. It's understanding ourselves as being part of the divine as well. Um, mm -hmm. That when you look at it, too, and this is really what's crazy about it. Um, is so many different belief systems are inside of it mm -hmm. that um we have a word for it now it's called syncretism everything fits together yeah yeah there's a lot of and i feel like you probably know this too micah that um whenever you start to go down one rabbit hole a lot of times it leads you into another into another endless into yeah and you know, one thing I think Blavatsky did really well by like telling you the seven sons and all of that is like shows how that that really works in real time. Like taking seven main planets, the seven most prominent planets or stars in our sky, uh, the seven days a week they represent, the seven colors of the rainbow they represent, and those colors seven are chakras. It goes on seven chakras, uh, seven metals, seven minerals, you know, deities, uh, all of that. And it's showing you like how multi-layered reality is and how everything exists in every layer of reality too. So we exist simultaneously at every frequency and every dimension all at the same time, past, present, and future. It's up to us on where we want to direct our focus yeah. to, you know, so um, and, and I feel like a lot of modern day shit come out of this too. Like uh, the whole secret movement. You ever seen the secret or heard of the secret? I'm yeah, sure the book, the secret, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's manifesting. Dog. That's manifesting your dreams and wealth, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, in essence, it's the law of attraction. Yeah, the law of attraction, correct? Yeah, the law of attraction. Um, a lot of that stuff came out of you know the word um, abracadabra. People, when people go, abracadabra. abracadabra is is Aleister Crowley, though. So. I know, I know, because we're going to transition into that. But abracadabra literally means I will speak into existence. The thing they don't want you guys to know, the important thing that I really want you to take away is that they don't want you to know how powerful your emotions are and they don't want you to know just how you can create your own reality. This is why the elites are doing what they're doing in the way that they're doing it because they want you to fight with each other and create their reality. Just stop doing that and focus on within and the ones that you love and try and better yourself and the things around you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I feel like uh, I feel like that's why it's important for us to really control what we allow in. You know, what it's like if you eat terrible food, you get fat. So, what you're ingesting spiritually, you know, mentally, emotionally, like that's what what's going to come out. You know, that's that's making up the substance of who you are. So it's like important for us not to continue to let you know to consume all the brainwashing shit if right. we want to to break free from this stuff and it's like you you think they don't that they play murder and all that shit on television 24 hours a day seven days a week because they want to raise your vibe yeah absolutely yeah listen guys the if you're gonna watch tv don't ever fall asleep with it on ever because your mind is still processing things yeah while you're out. don't ever fall asleep with the tv on ever I mean, your mind's probably processing in more of a freer, more powerful space, actually, when you're asleep, Mm -hmm. because you're in the astral world. You don't have the restrictions of the physical when you're in that dream state. That's where they say in the dream state, and there's things like uh, hypnagogic um, dream state induction, like inducing you into the hypnagogic dream state. That's a lot of where uh, ways that, you know, a lot of occultists have uh, went about astral projection. Um, but but in essence, it's like putting your mind or brain in the sleep state and being able to like perceive the sleep state while you're still awake. You know, there's something called the hypnagogic jerk. Hypnagogic jerk. I don't know if you know what it is, but basically you guys ever start to fall asleep and then you're, you're falling asleep and then you'll just be like, oh, or something. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're just you're, your body, your mind thinks because your breathing is being depressed and you're mm-hmm. falling to sleep that it's dying. So it sends a message to your body to wake you up. That's why you randomly sometimes do that. It's called a hypnagogic wow. jerk. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, I never heard of that though. And yeah, so, um, uh, this is, uh, in essence, man, you know, uh, and, and she describes Theosophy as a synthesis of science, religion, and philosophy, proclaiming that it was the reviving of an ancient wisdom which underlay all the world's religions. So, yeah, it's like, uh, I feel like anybody that's really into the occult, uh, and this is kind of how my journey started, too, was like I started with christianity and the bible and religion and i just expanded into every fucking religious book i could get my hands on so i relate a lot to a person like madame blavatsky um because i feel like that's what she is you know or a manly p hall someone that just gobbles up every bit of spiritual information they can get you know and they put it all together to see what's the commonalities of it and you know the big picture that it paints you know and it's like Quantum physicists say that the, aside from the fact they're having problem with the forces and they're, they can't, they can't make gravity work with everything else. It doesn't fit with it. And there's a reason for it. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But (laughs) what what I wanted to share with you guys is quantum physicists say that the, the, the sequence that can explain the universe creation and everything is going to be one sentence long. And that's what they're looking for. It's a syncretism. It's it's an it's it's a very simple answer because everything fits together. The reason everything is so chaotic right now is because we're still trying to fit it together. But this mm-hmm. is a puzzle. 
that you end up putting together. This is what it is. This is creation. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we're, we're remembering, we're putting the body back together, putting the pieces back together when we're when we're uh, tapping into to knowledge, right? We're remembering ancient knowledge, ancient wisdom. Yes. Um, which is in our DNA, I feel like. It's, it is. It's, Memory it's, gets passed down in DNA, absolutely. So and it flows, it flows through our blood, too, as yep. well. You know, it's like it's every bit of us and everywhere. And... Um, you know, a lot of people believe that, you know, people like her had, you know, that they had, they were elect or, you know, people that had great, you know, masters. Um, some of them were dark ass witches that, that mess with this stuff too. Not all of them were great people. Um, but we always but, say that, don't we, John? You can't sure. demonize an entire group of people because of certain individuals' actions. There are evil Jews in the world. There are Christians in the world. There are evil yeah. Masons in the world. That yeah. doesn't make everybody evil. That doesn't make I agree. I agree. I agree. But I'm just saying some of these people got their knowledge by not so... Um, right. Not so, you know, like it wouldn't... The ways that they, they got it, most people, I don't know if they would go to that extreme to get it. You know, mm-hmm. and, there, and and that's the, each person's different. And I mean, like, like you get different levels and different. You guys want an example of an evil way to get some uh, some knowledge and stuff? You could look at a sacrifice. <laughs> a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and that's what I mean. And like some of them, you know, there's a. Right now, I can say this: like when we shift, when we have these major energetic shifts, we birth spiritual children within ourselves. It's like um it's hard to explain but like you know it's like the spiritual self like so as we shift and ascend more when we're birthing like the 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 forever essence of us we're in a major major time right now like seriously Mm -hmm. it's really key and critical and what they're tricking a lot of people into doing is like sacrificing that part of themselves to the to the system to the machine Mm -hmm. you know um giving that energy over for something that's not but you know how like we and i'm talking to my listeners too how we found gnosis through self-motivation reading a lot using our minds and things of that nature yeah not everyone has that so it's up to people like us to bring it to people i agree no i absolutely agree i i think that um you know, certain people are put in positions for, you know, for certain reasons. And it's like each person brings their own, you know, you know, Micah Dank brings something very unique to Micah Dank and John Keane brings something very unique to John Keane. And it's like each piece is like a working piece of the puzzle and we all need it, you know, and um, I feel like by speaking it into existence, we bring power to it and by others hearing it and receiving it and then them interpreting it for themselves and then speaking their truth. You know, it's like we're amplifying something. There is a ripple effect. And that's why. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I I always tell people there's there's a reason that um, when you're in school and you're you're learning how to write, it's called spelling because it's (laughs) a spell. Writing is it's a spell. Yeah. 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 Well, that's we're we're still in a Babylonian system. And that's like our our Akashic record is that spiritual record that we can all tap into. It's got every it's infinite knowledge in essence is what it is. And when you can get into that frequency, you can pull from that, you know, um, you can pull from that knowledge. And that's where people like Tesla and, you know, all types of great minds throughout history say they have gotten their knowledge from is from, you know, like divine inspiration mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. an altered state. Uh, and I feel like that's what a lot of Eastern religions actually teach. And that's why they're so taboo or were so taboo in the West is because, you know, it was about activating something uh, in you at a, at a metaphysical level, right? As opposed mm-hmm. to like praying out outwardly to some deity in the sky and glorifying some idol um, and kind of waiting on, you know, God to do everything for you. It more 
uh, taught you about, you know, the, the inward side and showing you different practices you could do to, to initiate or ignite something within you to get your, 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 your third eye to open, to trigger open. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's different. And, and if you look at like Blavatsky who takes all of those ideas and puts them together, that's like telling you like a process. It's like, if you look at all the religions, all the spiritual schools of thought, put it all together, you know, you've got a complete manual from start to finish on how to to start incredible spiritual process to give you gifts upon gifts upon gifts upon gifts. And to give you such a deep understanding about how the fabric of reality works, both exoteric and esoterically, and to be able to weave it all together, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a big picture that's going to to, to benefit you, to allow you to kind of control, you know, the flow of, of your own life. I feel like, you know, beautiful, man. So listen, I want to take like a 30 second break. Cause I have to go. Yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to get something to drink too. So. Okay. So I'm going to let this record guys. We'll be right back and then we'll start up on Crowley. If you want to pull up the first slide. Okay. There we go. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, oh, God. All right. Okay, guys, that was the first half. We're going to start the second half very shortly. Uh, I see the computer moving around. John's not on camera with the mic yet. There's that endless loop. And uh, I think we're back. Sweet. So that was a good intro. John. Do me a favor one more time. Tell everyone the two books that you referenced for Blavatsky if they want to pick it up and understand. You didn't hear me, did you? Yeah. Uh, what did you say now, bro? Before we get into Crowley, just reference the two works from Blavatsky real quick so people can pick them up. Um, I believe uh, the two we talked about was uh, Isis Unveiled. Mm -hmm. And the Secret Doctrine by uh, Helena Blavatsky. Sometimes she'll be referred to also as Madame Blavatsky, but Helena Blavatsky, H.P. Blavatsky. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So let's get into Crowley. Nice. So a lot of people have misconceptions about Crowley. A lot of people think that he is pure evil. In fact, uh -huh. at the time he was alive, the press dubbed him the most wicked man or the wickedest man on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, he spent a lot of time in Paris and rumors have it that he is Barbara Bush's father. So 
I've heard that. that. That's on the conspiracy side, guys. If you want to look up Crowley and Barbara Bush, they're eerily similar, the looks. Um, in fact, Barbara Bush's mother was a socialite who went to Paris at the turn of the 19th, 20th century, 20th century, and met Crowley. So it's possible in the same way that Trudeau could be Castro's son because uh, they look very much alike. <laughs> but a lot of people think Crowley is just evil, but I want to bring some light to some of the wisdom that Crowley brought. Um, yeah, uh, and notice once again that that time frame, right? And this is the time too, I believe, also, which we'll get into this because this goes into the Lima after Crowley, uh, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard picked up on his practices and started the Babylon working, which is in essence to build Ron a new child. L. Ron Hubbard was founder of Scientology. Yeah, he was a, he was a science fiction writer, and Probably he started the science a, fiction religion. But anyway, go on, continue. Yeah, so, wrote more of, science fiction books than probably anybody on the face of planet Earth. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Alistair Crowley, born Edward Alexander Crowley. I'm just going to read this little paragraph here. Also sure. known as Freder Freder Pedarabo, and you'll notice in all of his books, and I'll show you a couple of them. We'll look at a couple of his prominent ones. Um, Frater Pedarabo is his pen name. Uh, it's his like magic name. Whenever you are, uh, not every magician does this, but a lot do. Um, they'll create an alias or a brand, a logo. It's a magician, right? Yes. Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna explain the difference between magic with a C and magic with a K? Sure. Yeah, I feel like I've been talking a lot of magic with a K since we started this. But yeah, that's, um, you know, magic, magic with a C is like parlor tricks and bullshit, you know, pull a rabbit out of a hat. Magic with a with a K is something that we can't explain scientifically, you know, it, um, but I feel like it's purely using our will. And that's why you hear, you know, a lot of his do what thou wilt right it's the whole of the law it's using our will to influence our reality and that's where things like the secret and all of that derive from even blavatsky all of this has come from one main vein you know the occult covers it all right and it's you know the funny I thing about do what thou wilt is mm -hmm. is the christians will take that and make him the most evil man in the world and say no you are not to do what thou wilt you are to follow christ and do what he wilt in the sense that's basically um, what it is this is to follow your own calling follow your own purpose that's well christianity and thelema are diametrically opposed if you yeah. think about it it's do what thou will or thy will be done yeah exactly right? that's perfect that's even better than what i said <laughs> yeah well that's that's how it's you know both lit do what thou will and then thy will be done you know those are the two mottos of each each religion so they're diametrically opposed and that's why he said he was the B666. He actually, I think it's going to say this. Uh, I don't know. It might. But his father, I know a lot more about him than I do Blavatsky. But I know something about Blavatsky, too. Um, his father was like a preacher or something like that. He was actually brought into MI6 in Great Britain and then the CIA in the United States. He had a whole, a lot of people believe he's fucking lynched in Churchill. <laughs> um there's a lot of shit. He went to the Great Pyramids, and that's where, you know, was it belonged to the Golden Dawn, uh, uh, the OTO, the Ordo, Templo, Ordo, Ordo Templi Orientis. Um, you know, he's most prominent, you know, uh, secret societies on the face of the earth and high ranking as fuck. Everywhere he went, he became, you know, the grand master there. And that's why, you know, it's his workings and stuff that literally created the Babylon working. It was people carrying on his work, Jack Parsons, uh, JPL laboratory, J Jack Parsons or uh, Jet Propulsions Laboratory, the military industrial complex. They're getting their shit from him, right? Because, and, and I don't know if you've ever, um, Jake Parsons, right? He's related to Jack. I've done shows with him, great dude, you know, like uh, great genes, <laughs> you know, it's like um, they, uh, certain certain groups have really benefited off of knowing how it all works so we'll, we'll read this really fast here uh because it gives a lot of the stuff that i, I want to say but freighter pedarabo that's the pen name uh and the great beast right so his negative side that he's pushing all his energy to 
the logo, like my brand is best damn podcast, um, right? You create books and things like that. Those are logos. They're sigils. They're symbols. I think, think Frater writers... means brother in Latin. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it probably does. It's probably got its own um, Latin meaning to to the word. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably it's probably a father or brother. You know. Yeah, yeah. it's either father or brother. I can't quite. Yeah. Remember. Oh no, Potter is father. So Freder is brother. That's why it's called a fraternity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why you know police and all that are fraternal orders as well. They're brotherhoods too. Um, and they were six pointed, five pointed stars on their badge. The great beast was influential English occultist, ceremonial magician, poet, painter, novelist, mountaineer. This dude even fucking created plays, bro, that were completely immersive, where he did spells and had drums and fucking incense burning, where people would come to these plays and get fully immersed in ritual. He was out there and he was addicted to heroin. I know that as well. Um, in his role, the founder of the Three Might Faith, he came to see himself as the prophet who was entrusted with informing humanity that it was entering the new aeon of Horus. In the early 20th century, a time when old ethical religious systems would be replaced by new ones focused upon the principle of individual liberty. Born into a wealthy upper class family as a young man, he became an influential member of the esoteric hermetic order of the Golden Dawn after befriending the order's leader, Samuel Lydell McGregor Mathers. And that's a fucking prominent name, the Mathers family, Cotton Mathers and all that, like Salem, right? This goes way back, guys. I'm telling you, witches and warlocks in America. Just yeah, we, a little bit, add a little bit of context, guys. The time frame that Alistair Crowley lived in, uh, heroin was created by Bayer and it was over the counter as a uh, pain medicine. So it's not like he was going <laughs> drug dealing. You know, he probably yeah. just went into a pharmacy and picked up heroin. They didn't know. Well, maybe they started figuring out its addictive properties. But it's 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 not like heroin like we think today. Yeah, yeah. But he was, yeah, it's, it's wild, man. It really is. A uh, different world. Um, subsequently believing that he was contacted by the Holy Guardian Angel, an entity known as Iwas, uh, while staying in Egypt in 1904. He received a text known as the book of the law from what he believed was a divine source and around which he would come to develop his new religion of the Lima. He would go on by new ones focused upon the principle of individual liberty. Uh, Crowley was also bisexual, recreational drug experimenter and social critic. In many of these roles, he was in revolt against the moral and religious values of his time. What you also don't know about Crowley that they're not going to tell you. What, where is this from? They're not going to tell you here. He this is Crystal a, Lakes. He invented a sexual position. Really? No, so I'm not going to take my clothes off for all of you. <laughs> basically the one where the man's on top and pushes it down and goes like this. He invented that. <laughs> How do you know that, bro? <laughs> I was at the parties. <laughs> okay. Well, shit. Whatever, just, man. That was too far? Too far? No. No, that's cool. That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, they was known as the wickedest man in the world. Um, and he's still an influential occultist. Yeah, he's a libertarian also. <laughs> he was... Where does it say this? Hold on. Da, da, da. Do what thou wilt, because it has gained widespread notoriety during his lifetime. Crowley was a British writer, mountaineer. Yeah, okay. So uh, he was an influential member of the cult organizations of Golden Dawn, the Ordo Templi Orientis, best known for the cult writings, the Book of the Law, Sacred Text of the Lima, and he gained notoriety during his lifetime, infamously dubbed the wicked man in the world. He Crowley also claimed to be a Freemason. But the regularity of his initiations with the United Grand Lodge of England has been disputed. Hmm. So, yeah, this dude was in every fucking yeah. secret society there was. This motherfucker was a Freemason. He belonged to the Golden Dawn, uh, the OTO. And I used to have a writing. I don't know if I still have it on my computer. Um, but it's called Chapter 23 OTO. And it's the initiation uh, into the Minerva degree. And that's like the owl worship. Uh, where's it? Owl Or yes. how they do it at the... Uh... 
the, the Bohemian Grove. Yes, well, Bohemia uh, is like a, a, a German thing, um, and so is uh, Bavaria, and that's where like Illuminatus and all of that shit originated, right? Mm -hmm. It's in a lot of those schools of thoughts, and then that's San Francisco, that's the gay capital too, right? The mm -hmm. Redwood Forest and all that shit, Bohemian Grove, Minerva, and then see Minerva, the Roman goddess of wisdom, strategic warfare, the sponsor of art, trade, and strategy, uh, Romans equated her with the Greek goddess Athena, and you see a lot of Athena shit and Crowley, Crowley, Crowley shit too. Throughout the Romans, though, did not stress her relation to battle and warfare as the Greeks did. Following the Greek myths around Athena, she was born of Metis, who had been swallowed by Jupiter and burst from his, her father's head. Fully armed and clad in armor, Jupiter forcibly impregnated the Titanus Metis, which resulted in her attempting to change shape or shape shift to escape him. Jupiter then recalled the prophecy that his own child would overthrow him as he had Saturn, and in turn, Saturn had Salus. So Saturn is Satan, right? Jupiter is oh, Jesus. Saturn has always been Satan. Yeah, Jupiter's Jesus, right? He bore his stripes, it's striped planet, or it's Thor, or it's Zeus, or whatever, right? Um, and well, what uh, is what is what is hey Zeus or Jesus? It's hey Zeus. Yeah, and it's also, if you think, it's he's us, right? Jesus, he's us. Isu, right. it is you, right? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Right? Every name is like saying, like, it's it's actually you. Um, but yeah, Jupiter uh, always plays like the good guy in, in all of the stories, right? Whether it's Zor, Thor, Zeus, Jesus, it doesn't matter. Jupiter, um, you know, and Kronos, Saturn, you know, that's that Saturnian death cult. And these are all the seven main planets or seven colors of the rainbow, which the covenant is a rainbow, right? So this is always occult knowledge is in this shit. People can't see it. You know, they can't see it's right out in plain sight. It's like, but if you don't know it, you know, and it's like um, the greatest spell book on earth is the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and there are people that, fucking practice hoodoo and voodoo that use the holy bible literally i've known some you know like wild ass shit you know people you don't want to screw with you know like that can do some crazy stuff through the bible because it's you know in your free masonic bible is pretty much the same thing as a regular bible by the way mm -hmm. you know so um fearing that their child would be made and would grow stronger than he was and rule the heavens in his place Jup jupiter swallowed metis whole after tricking her into turning herself into a fly. The Titans gave birth to Minerva and forged weapons and armor for her child while within Jupiter's body. In some version of the story, Metis continued to live inside of Jupiter's mind as a source of his wisdom. Others say she was simply a vessel for the birth of Minerva. The constant pounding and ringing left Jupiter in agonizing pain. To relieve the pain, Vulcan used a hammer to split Jupiter's head and from the cleft, Minerva emerged whole adult and in full battle armor. She was the virgin goddess of music, poetry, medicine, wisdom, commerce, weaving, and crafts. She's often depicted as her sacred nature in Owl, the Owl of Minerva, which symbolizes her association with wisdom and knowledge, and less frequently with the snake and the olive tree. Yeah, so, I mean, she's the divine feminine is what she is, just mm -hmm. to be all the way for real. Um she's lucifer also or luna uh there's a million different depictions of, of what they're actually talking about here um and when they're talking about minerva jumps out forged in weapons that is the projection or the lower dark side of us that's our shadow side that jumped out to protect us and defend us that's the masculine side you know we were trapped here in essence is what the story is we, we're, we're the children of Jupiter, which would be Ea or Inky, if you look at like the Anunnaki tale, which he's the one who made us, right? Mm -hmm. um, Saturn, Satan, ruling all of all of the shit, you know, being over all of it, being the father of, of Jupiter. Uh, us, you know, coming from Jupiter, basically. And, um, you know, now, now here we are having higher and lower aspect you know, and being trapped. Uh, so our shadow is essentially like defending our essence, you know, it's uh, and Carl Jung goes much deeper into this. Yeah, really? Well, I mean, I, I, I love it. Um, I love looking at this. And it even says too that uh, 
In honor of the goddess of learning, this was a title adopted, adopted for the first degree of Aleister Crowley's OTO ritual, see the Minerval or brother of Minerva. And uh, like the Minerval degree, that's like the first degree in uh, Golden Dawn OTO. It's called chapter 23. You can look it up online if you want or whatever. Um, but it, it talk, it's really like you would think like because it's like so associated with Satanism and Luciferianism that it would just be the most base and terrible things as part of the initiation. But a lot of it is, is agreeing to be like an upstanding person and to not harm anything unless it harms you and to, you know, it's like uh, about- I mean, It's life. very similar. It reminds me of LaVey's 11 Satanic uh, Commandments. Uh, I feel like his are very distorted and destructive, but they are, they can be absolutely. But the, the whole, um, punish stupidity and just be the best self of yourself kind of thing. My problem with Satanists is not that they, I mean, they don't believe in God. That's one thing, but my problem <laughs> with Satanists mostly is that, um, there are 11 commandments that they live by. Um, they think that they're doing good things. But what they really are is literally worshiping the self, which is what you're not supposed to do. Yes. You're supposed to live for others. That is where life comes in. That is the yes. meaning. It I is agree. not to focus completely on yourself. And they may think they have the moral high ground, but in reality, they don't. I agree. No, I absolutely agree with you, Mike. I think uh, service to others is what we're meant to, to be here for and that, um, service to self is how they justify like all the fucked up evil stuff it's like if you if you really convince yourself that your life is more important than everyone else's on the planet then you can justify doing anything you know Absolutely. and that and that's what they have and that's where that i feel like there's people that have touched some really crazy places consciously and have really learned a lot and are really powerful magicians i feel like you know, some of them, you know, that have that, that thought, that's what makes people dangerous. That's why not everybody has the knowledge because a lot of people I feel like would turn out to be like that. And like, when you look at like, um, you know, three degrees of, of initiation, the first degree is like recognizing your lower shadow self. The second degree is like integrating the darkness with the light. And then the third is like purging and becoming, becoming the light, like the enlightenment. Um, but a lot of people never make it past the first degree because when they, I mean, you can make that argument though, John, that the reason that stuff is hidden, which is the argument you've been making is that the reason the stuff is hidden is because in the wrong hands, it's very powerful. It can be very destructive. Look but at I what people are doing with it now. Like that's the, exactly my point. My point is, is that the good people don't know it and that the evil people still have it. Yeah. Well, I think it can. This is a weird thing, but if it truly is serpent knowledge or fallen angel knowledge, which it is, it's information coming from the heavens. It's fallen down. Um, you know, uh, we're receiving, you know, information from a higher place. So it's come down to us. You can say it's come down from heaven, fell down. I don't care how you look at it, but, um, you know, it couldn't be that this knowledge really does corrupt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I'll just be honest, man, it's so easy to get lost on, on that, on that path. You know, it's, it's happened to me, you know, it's real easy to get lost on the, on the occult path because, you know, you got to make sure your light is on because you're in, the, you're in the darkness, you know? So it's like, if you slip up, that can be your ass, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, seriously. And it's like, uh. You're messing with, it's like the, it's like the major leagues of spirituality. It's like going to the pros, you know what I mean? It's like, there are people that know what they're doing, you know, and not everybody takes kindly to people just putting out information that's not meant for everyone too. Some people are really, I swear to you, most of the people that are offended by people like me and you mm -hmm. that actually drop real knowledge, um, they're offended because they don't want this to be out to the profane. You know, they don't want, they feel like we're, we're throwing our pearls before swine. And a lot of them, you know, it's even says in the cabal, and it's like, they'll crucify you, you know, for putting this type of stuff out into the public. 
you know, and you're, and you're and you can try, you know, and that's why it's always been kept secret, you know, in the past is because, you know, it's like basically to know the wisdom yourself, you know, and to do and be the best version of yourself you can be and do do good for the world and let the world, you know, figure things out on their their own. Just you help how you can by helping yourself. Don't get yourself killed for nothing, basically. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what more can we learn about Crowley? Um, well, this comes out of he went into deep states of trance, Crowley did. And this is one of the coolest fucking books there, uh, there is. It's just interesting. Um, it's called uh the amelantra working for anybody that's interested in the amelantra working or a lot or it's called the book of lamb sometimes mm -hmm. and it's about this alien and i'll show you the picture of the alien right here this is lamb and this is an alien and think about this when they started the babylon working so these workings are giant spells okay he done um, in this forest over in England. He owned the, the Loch Ness property. And that's why uh, Jimmy Page, the guitarist of Led Zeppelin, bought it because it used to be owned by Aleister Crowley or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like over it. Um, it's like a real haunted place. That's shit. exactly what happened. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin did buy Crowley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and he was a cultist too. You know, like he's in that one, and the song remains the same. He's got the Hermes outfit on the wizard and he's climbing up the hill and shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah, they're, they're all into that. Um, but this was astral projection into a trance state and him documenting it because that's what magic's all about is you write it down. That's basically Edgar, Casey. That's what Edgar Casey did. Yeah. Well, Edgar Casey got answers his way. This is his conversation. And I'm telling you, it is, fucking wild and he discovers this concept about the egg of consciousness and i'm telling you many people after this have hit this too i'm going to read just a little little piece and let you uh hear what it says okay 3 a.m i asked the wizard for a message a large red a appeared and an eagle came through it and flew away through the woods and over some meadows close to the ground the eagle disappeared and a red Indian was running like the wind. Very beautiful as a picture. T and I entered the astral plane. I draped into a diaphanous viral yellow green, he in a brilliant red with gold braid. In one hand, he had a scepter and a ring on the other. We went through the ceiling and up about 900 feet in the air and looked up and saw an eye in the clouds. We went to the place of the eye and saw a platform-like building. There were many doors with signs of various sorts on them, such as the swastika, etc., etc. We went to a distant door at the end of the corridor on which there was no sign. A dwarf stood to the right and a girl to the left of the door. I asked the dwarf where the door led to. He did not answer, but showed a column with a blazing top. I asked the woman and she said, Heaven interpreted it meant where we wanted to go. I opened the door easily and saw a corridor in darkness. We passed through and saw light outside at the end of the door. A sheep was just inside the door. Also, sheep down on the ground below. We went outside and looked down a few hundred feet upon a beautiful pastoral scene in some villages. We dropped down to the scene and a beautiful lady came. She was blonde and dressed in creamy white. I asked her her name and she answered, Eve. This seemed wrong for her to say. I asked her where we were to go to. She said, France. I asked about the message and after some time, she lay upon the ground with her head toward us and waved her hand, which looked like the fins of a fish toward a village. We all went there. On the way, a man who looked like a Greek philosopher walked a little behind us as if he were in a shadow. He had a staff and was in a Greek costume. So I'm just going to say a lot of this too, guys, what he's describing um, is, is something like you can go through yourself too. Like uh, what's being read here, this can like uh, walk you through if you wanted to take the same journey as as he took here he i don't know if he did this assisted with drugs or not I, 
but this is part of what he did. You know, he did scrying and automatic writing, um, astral projection. Oh, do me a favor. Explain to the listeners automatic writing real quick. Just give a quick overview of what um, it is. Is it? It's basically, in a sense, what um, what remote viewers do, right? With the paper, and they they just draw. Okay. Yeah. Well, any form of divination uh, is um, like somebody, uh, a person acting as a medium or a channel, mm -hmm. and using some sort of tool as a conduit. You know. So if it's automatic writing, it's I get into that vibratory state. You know, blank state. A lot of them close their eyes so they can actually see on the inside what's going on, and then. They automatically start writing words down. You guys have words. ever had a? Um, if you guys ever had a medium come to channel a dead relative? Now, not all of them are good. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot. Of I had uh, John. If, if you had a medium come to channel you guys, or if like you've ever had a house party and you had a medium and you all got readings, you'll notice that they write down what they see. It's part of the whole thing. Um, well, I hate to say it though, but like a lot of the occult though is mentalism. So right. it makes a lot of sense for someone that's very advanced in the occult to develop some sort of medium abil mediumship ability because you're fine tuning and honing those skills so much so that, you know, it's like you, you, it really leads you to the, to that path of like finding a way to tune it, channel it, use it. That way you can actually apply it like me with you know tarot cards that's one of the things i you know tarot cards uh and astrology but tarot is my you know my main thing you know i do tarot and i love astrology it's you know been a way for me to to use my my skills into the physical i feel like you know it's got to have an outlet somewhere it's like when you really you know and, and mentalism too uh, you know, a lot of people learning how to master their mind. That's, you know, that's the law of attraction right there. And that's what a lot of the Jungian psychology is trying to get you to do too, is, you know, go through that and any type of dark night of the soul, that's what's taking place too. Whenever you look at a lot of this, anything that Crowley did was very ritually oriented because he was, even though he was in so many different occult structures, he still seemed to be like a rogue. You know what I mean? It's like he's still kind of done what he wanted. There was a ritual he did, I believe, in England. One of the biggest ones. I don't know the name of it right off the top. But he was, in essence, he was like done it for like fucking, it was supposed to be like a two-year ritual or some shit. This guy gets like six months into it or something. Every day in this forest, like trying to invoke every demon on earth, I think. Something to that effect. Um, which if you... If you like uh, hear the story of like Solomon, who was the wisest man to ever live, he built his temple uh, with demons, right? And saying he used his inner demons to build, you know, the third temple to bring to bring enlightenment, you know, so like Moses with the burning bush, like he found enlightenment and he used his own very own demons to, to get himself there. That's how he became wise. Um, you know, so Crowley was, you know, opening lots of portals and doors and you know a lot of people believe maybe he did it intentionally and that that ritual never got closed or and it was dangerous and that he wasn't the same after that a lot of people said that he was very tortured uh that you know he was even crazy you know and i feel like when you're fucking with some really intense shit this dude went into the great pyramid and got spoken to by iwas right and was told like you know, he was to usher in the Aeon of Horus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who the fuck has that happened to them? You know, so this guy was, he was a unique cat to say the least, right? Like, he was doing some wild shit. If you can't see here by this book, this giant fucking alien, and he's going in and talking to, like, you know, six-wing cherubim and all this shit during, you know, uh, you know, this, uh, this journey. You know that he takes and like i said he created some of the most intricate rituals on the face of the earth i mean they were actual plagues that you could go to and they would have ritual drums and smells and herbs and fucking keys and everything like totally immersive to get you in an altered state of consciousness and he was trying to like 
revolutionized this kind of shit. And it was just so far ahead of its time. People weren't ready. And yeah, he fully embodied the B666 uh, archetype. And, it, and I feel like it was like his big fuck you to religion, especially Christianity, because his father was like some sort of pastor, you know? And it's like, um, when you look at like, all of this too, him being used by British MI6 and fucking the CIA, uh, it's showing like the occult aspect of mind control as well. You know, uh, and I feel like that we've talked about this psychology and all of this. And then even the adaptation of frequency we see now in today's world, you know, six generation silent warfare that's used on peak directed energy. You know, like, you ever heard of people called targeted individuals? They get absolutely attacked, you know, flat out, you know, in a cult form by, by governments and military industrial complexes. So a lot of what this guy was doing and like, um, using different techniques of sensory deprivation, uh, in, inducing, uh, trauma, uh, ecstasy, like just all different types of forms to like fracture fragment consciousness. I mean, they were exploring some deep, deep shit. And I feel like even everything from like Timothy Leary and all of that comes from, you know, this guy's studies. This guy set the stage for all of the modern day mind control that we have now, I believe. You know, it's like, huh? No, it's incredible. You know, I would absolutely uh, uh, say that that's pretty, pretty close to accurate. Yeah, I would agree. Um... How would you de- how would you define Thelema though if you had to if you had to give it like a dictionary definition? Um, to me, it is uh, it uh, do what thou wilt. So it's like satanic to me. It's Satanism. Thelema is Satanism, but it's a form of like satanic Kabbalah. You know, um, you know you. Uh, I think of like Marilyn Manson when I think of Thelema. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Anton LaVey, you know, shit like that. It's like there's a bunch of shit truck fucks that, that do it. Do you think that, Anton LaVey drew a lot of his um, tenements or how he structured the Church of Satan when he created it based off of Crowley? Um, I think he was like really, I think Anton LaVey was super low vibe. I'm just keeping it real. I don't think he was smart. I don't think he was groundbreaking. I think he was a total fucking tool um, from the CIA or government or whatever. I don't feel like nothing. He he just inverted what the Bible said, and there was no real thought or depth or spirit to what he said. And it's like, and it perverted a lot of real occult shit. It was like a dumbed down fucking shit truck chuck version of like the occult and i hated uh the satanic bible and i've read it a few times i just think it's a terrible terrible book it's terribly written um there's no wisdom in it you know you don't walk away from it like feel like damn i just got some profound shit from this book you know what i mean like you don't feel like that after you read that book and a lot of spiritual books i don't care like you will if you read one of these books and maybe not this one in particular but Right here, the book of lies, the book of the law, those two books will blow your ass out of the fucking water with the concepts he's talking about. And I think that these books, maybe they're before he went crazy, you know, 1913, you see the years. This once again, this is that time period. I feel like humanity, we were breaking out of something, man. We were, you know, creating television and radio and, you know, the industrial revolution we were like doing big things and maybe this is why the government decided to take things in control because of how we were you know we were breaking out man and all of a sudden you see like the ufo agenda and all that start coming around you know about a decade or so later and uh you know, CIA gets invented and all that, you know, there's just a lot of shit, man, that ends up starting that, you know, against the citizens and to really dumb us down and terrible food and, you know, Rockefeller Institute, Federal Reserve. Yeah, man. It's like after, you know, the railroad, railroads and all of that, it was all downhill from there, man. It's like they had us, you know, civil war, all of that. 
you know, so, but there was a time where it looked like we were really churning out intellectuals and shit, like a lot of intellectuals. If you look at these time periods, like all the great minds come from this time frame. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? Would we just stop right there? You know, and it's like now everything is this weird knockoff version of truth, of knowledge. Right. You know? And it's like people discourage, and if I, you know, people discourage the fuck out of me for the stuff I talk about. Like if I talk about the occult or if I tarot or whatever, it's like, and I'm sure you get a lot for the astrology, astro theology. Um, you know, where people, they don't, they don't like something that's, they don't like what's different. They don't like, you know, there's no convenient truth to, to a lot of this. It puts everything into your hands, you know, it puts everything into your hands. What do you think to wrap up? Basically, what do you think that um, if people were to take away positive contributions from both Blavatsky and Crowley, what would you say they were? positive contributions um um positive contributions i would say for blavatsky the positive contribution was the impressive feat of gathering up all of those different religious materials all of those different schools of thought all of those different belief systems there was you know esoteric mysteries and all of it and put it together in one big body of work and making it cohesive and understandable and you know really really expanding our knowledge on uh the spiritual world and metaphysics so she really she was you know huge and um you know crowley revolutionized uh the way that people see magic in general, the way people go about uh, spell work, the way that people uh, attempt to influence their reality or manipulate energy in many ways, shape, or form, uh, it, it comes out of this vein and it's influenced pop culture, you know, from fucking rock music and now rap music too, um, to government, to, right? Like everything, like this has had a profound profound and right. wasn't Crowley one of the guys on Sgt. Pepper's the Beatles album I think so I think so I think he goes back to all that too yeah I mean there's so many weird connections with this cat it's not funny like this dude's interwoven into um the, the fucking you know the the workings of our world and it's like he done a lot of rituals this guy was a powerful dude seriously he was a very i wouldn't want to fuck with this guy that's all i'm saying like he was a powerful dude and he's had his hand in a lot and the powers that be knew he was on his shit too so all right so what i would like to just wrap up and tell you guys before i tell everyone where to find you do you want me to email you this and then you can upload it to your uh yes i will I'll, I'll upload it to all my channels too all right so um just tell everyone where they can find you all right you can find me uh youtube.com slash best damn podcast official or uh best damn podcast um you can get me at facebook or instagram at best damn podcast twitter at the real best damn and i'm on tiktok bit shoot rumble uh i do personal tarot readings as well uh you can email me the real best damn podcast at gmail.com if you want to get a hold of me um, yeah, man. And thank you so much, my guy, dude, I really appreciate you having me on, bro. I always love, you know, uh, hanging out with you, dude. So. This was amazing. And what I'd like to just close off and tell you guys is I know there's going to be some religious people that watch this. And if you don't want to find their work or you want to stay clear of them, that's fine. But what's not acceptable is when you guys dismiss things without understanding it first, you really should. Grab as much information as you can and then see what makes sense to you. That's the, that's just what I want to say. So, John, man, thank you. This thank is going to download. I'm going to email it to you. And then nice. uh, I'm going to put it up right away. I'll send you a link. Nice, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Take care. All right, bro.